Good morning, America, and uh, I'd like to introduce Dan Gregor. Dan, let's give Dan a round of applause. Please. I tell you, I, I spent the last week uh, roaming the county and putting up signs and everything and jumping ditches and all that. I did a dislocation of my left foot and all that, and it has let me know it two years ago and it's let me know it today. Uh, I am Dan Gregory. I am running for the Register of Deeds, uh, not the Register of Mezzanine Conveyance, but they still like to have down in Charleston, or the state of Charleston, I should say. Real quickly, um, I grew up after my dad was in the military. Both of my parents were Marines. They went to Paris Island. Uh, they did not meet in the Marines. They moved from the same town of Statesville, North Carolina. Uh, he later went to the Air Force and, and retired. We ended up here in uh, 1976 and have lived here ever since. We attended and graduated from Irmo High School. And also, uh, yeah, I know Keith from back then, but uh, and graduated USC and I was a political science major. Whole time I was in college and, and many years after that, I worked for the state government in different positions. I was with the House and Senate Committee going through college and then ended up the Budget Control Board and the data research and census data. Also ended up precinct demographics, redrawing House and Senate district, congressional districts. Met a lot of the legislators, obviously, that way. Um, from there, I went to work in the state Senate as a legislative aide uh, to the President Pro Tem and the Chairman of the Senate Finance Committee at the time with Senator Drone, who is now retired, 92 years old. Um, from that, I ended up in the uh, governor's office. From another job I did, uh, which was for free, was, was working for Sheriff Metz. I was a deputy sheriff for this county for 11 years. I did that for free. And also for two years right down here in South Congaree in the uh, late 90s. I was there. Um, from that, in the governor's office, I worked in the state office of victim assistance, having the law enforcement background to work through victim claims. It's a great program. Um, from that, uh, I ended up in Richland County working in the treasurer's office. And my main job there is, is uh, abstracting properties. In that office, we, we range from 1,300 to 1,500 properties a year that we have to abstract. Uh, this has been the biggest year I've had to do about 300, a little over 300 deeds uh, that we had to do this year. It's more and more each year, it seems. Uh, so I do have a background in that area of, in the deeding process. My first year there, I've been there nine years doing that. My first year there, I spent at the Register of Deeds over in Richland County. Um, so it is an interesting time in the Register of Deeds office, believe me. Um, so. Basically, why am I running, of course, uh, I'm extremely honored, it is an honor. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Steve Isom, he's, he's been there for me as a newbie to all this. I've kind of always been in the background behind politicians, but this is the first time I've run. Uh, Steve has really been there for us. Uh, these are some crazy times right now for our party, obviously, uh, and uh, Steve has always been there. In fact, many times we've talked at 1.30 in the morning. Uh, and here lately it seems even more so. Uh, so uh, I do appreciate Steve for that. He's, he's, he's uh, been very helpful. Let me talk a little bit about and I, I, the incumbent of an office. Obviously, they get to get up and talk about what they've done. Obviously, they do have a record that you can look at. Uh, they do have budgets that you can look at. Um, you know, and, and basically, uh, they can just talk about good things that have happened. You as the challenger, unfortunately, because I don't really like talking bad about people, but if you just get up here and say, well, everything's wonderful in the office, I'm wasting money and my time, campaigning, everything's great, let's have a nice day, and please vote for me, um, you know, I just think that's a disservice. But I'd like to say ahead of time, I apologize, I don't like talking bad about people, but. Uh, some things need to be pointed out that's going on in the office. Um, both uh, April McIver was here December 30th, 2011. I think Tommy Plunk was here that day too, talking about they're both abstractors and talking about some problems in that office. Um, 
And then again, Debbie Gunner, the current Register of Deeds, was here January 13th, uh, talking about some things in the office. And, and two, back to what they were uh, mentioning that was going on in the office. Um, who can guess what the main thing people at, tell me about when I tell them I'm running for the Register of Deeds? What's that? Uh, what you do? Well, the thing is this. They say, and unfortunately they say, somebody really needs to take care of, the, take care of those employees. It's, it's not a good atmosphere in the office, unfortunately. That's the one main thing they say. I don't ask them about it. They just bring it up. Um, her actions or inactions basically to solve problems uh, and all is well for many years. But as I look through the budget, when you have problems in your office and you, and you look at the budget, generally you're going to find things that when someone puts in their budget, what do we need to do better? What do I want to do in the future? And you have to write up what you're doing. Now, Debbie was up here talking about, okay, there was an old system there and it cost so much money. This is a lot of money, what she said. And, you know, I came in and now we're down to the county having its own system. What she failed to tell you was it took seven to nine years to make that decision. Okay. Looking at, looking at the budget from 2003 and four, when that vendor was still in place, it was close to $200,000 a year for that system. Okay. You times that by seven to nine, that's over a million dollars. That's just due to inaction basically. So that's one of the things I wanted to point out. Um, you know, she talks about being a, a good steward of taxpayer dollars. Um, you know, she talked about her in-house system. So it's the thing, uh, the stewardship, let's put it this way, stewardship of county records. There was a lot of mention of that from the other opponent. And um, Tommy was talking about that too here, because they're in there every day. Uh, they said there were indexing file problems from the 60s and 70s. Uh, abstractors having to write notes to other abstractors, letting them know exactly where things were. The index would tell them something else. Or they, it was not legible in the office. These are things that basically uh, that they shared with her. Um, and, and, you know, whether it, out of inaction or just not listening, you know, it's still there. Um, now the other thing was she talked about plats, and that's what the other folks talked about too. That the plats, the originals are being torn up because the people had their hands on the actual originals of these plats. If you look back in the budget again, you'll see that back in the 2003 and 4 that she put in money to laminate the plats. Okay, um, so now this problem as far as people putting their hands on original documents. Again, it's been going on from seven to nine years. All right, now is it because April McIver brought this up that two weeks later she shows up to this very group and says, okay, I'm going to do something about it, but we're talking seven to nine years this has been going on. So it, it, it's, it's troubling in a way. Um, so uh, the other thing is it hurt 2013 budget, which is just going in. She talks about that, okay, now I'm going to do something about these plats. What I, what I came up really wasn't working, that's what she said to you. Um, and review that video for January 13th of her and you'll see her saying that. Guess what vendor she's going to have take care of Lexington County's plats? Greenville County. Why? <laughs> so Greenville County is going to take care of Lexington County's plats. Now, in all fairness to Debbie, maybe that's the cheapest way, maybe that's the easiest way, maybe that's the quickest way, because if the county doesn't have the equipment in the first place to do what's needed, and she's letting Greenville County do it at the, at the tune of about $6,000. That's in the 2013 budget. You can look at that. I have it here if you want to see it. Um, so th those are some of the things that are kind of going on in the office. Uh, a lot of it's inaction, not listening to your customer. Uh, what they're what they're telling you. So what do I have for some ideas about the budget? Okay, what am I going to do? Um, you know, you always hear I'm going to save the taxpayer money. What I do, you know, I'm a good steward. I'm going to save the taxpayers dollars. All right, I, you know, who who in this room taxes have gone down? Anybody? Here's my tax bill. 
it went up $41.99 for my home. You know, it, it's good to tell people that, but let's look at reality. Now, that means, that doesn't mean to spend what you want to spend, obviously. You still have to be a good steward, or it'll go even higher. Um, so, my ideas about the budget. Dr. Witherspoon was in here on the 13th and asked her, uh, has your budget gone down? To which she replied, yes, it has. Well, in all actuality, it's gone over 50000 over two years from fiscal year 10 to what she's asking in 13. Your budget going up could be personnel matters. All that. That's fine if it goes up, but own it. Tell people, yes, it is going up, but this is why. Okay? Um, some ideas that I have. If I'm uh, given the privilege of being the steward there in the register of deeds office, you know, if I have to raise the budget by $100,000, because by doing that I see either a piece of equipment or something that will save the county a million, you know, that just makes sense, okay? So sometimes you may have to raise it, it may be one-time money to do so. As long as you're a good steward with what you're, what you're planning, and it's to save money, obviously. Um, so, uh, you know, I want to also set up a, a non-formal committee of users of the office, abstractors, lawyers, the public, and keep an ear out as to what they're seeing in the office, okay? Let's get rid of inaction to the customer that's coming into that office to use the office. That's like any business, you know, you need to listen to your customer and what they're telling you. You're not going to be around long if you don't, obviously, just with any business. Um, so I want to keep my ear to the to the end user of the office, definitely. Um, now, uh, I'm also to to get one copy one one copy in that office is fifty cents. Okay, fifty cents a piece. What is that? What does that derive for the office? It is revenue. The office derives about a million and a half a year at this point. It is coming. It's kind of fluid right now because of what's going on in the economy. Uh, she projects $45,500 just from the copy revenue at this time, what she charges people. Okay. Give an example, <coughs> Richland County's at 25 cents a page. All right. What? Well, can we, can we lower that? Would that really save the taxpayer money walking in the door? Or how about the small business, the abstract they're walking in? When they submit the bill to the attorney, I've got $50 in copy costs. That's part of the line. So when you go and you have a closing, that little line says what you pay the attorney for the closing costs and the abstractor fees. Right? That's, a, that's a direct way to save money for the people. You have to study that though. How far can you go with it? About every 10 cents that you take off that 50 cents is $10,000, okay? So I'm, I would look at that very strongly. I would study it. Now, I'm not somebody that says I'm going to study that and it makes it sound good. If it is feasible and, and physically responsible, I would love to do that and definitely change that. That's one of the ideas uh, that I'm looking at. Um, and, and basically, that's a 1,667% markup because that copy in that office costs three cents. That's oh. in her budget too. So it's, it's a cost. So you it's, cents, but it's charging, charging correct. That's in the uh, 2013 budget. You'll see that. That's been probably an ongoing thing. Um, now, what about what about John Q. Citizen walking in? Hey, I I need my, a copy of my deed. I misplaced. I don't want to do. It. Why not give it to him for free? We're, we're talking about two or three pages, nine cents. Can we do that? I'd love to do it. We'd study that. And if, it, if it, we can possibly do it, let's do it. You know, why not? So, I mean, that's how you can save people money and, and, and not go out there and just tell them what you're going to do. Um, another thing that kind of bothered me looking through the budget, here's our 2013 right here. Is there goals? 
When most people have goals, they you need quantitative goals. We produced, we, we took in this D, we held it for a day in 0.25, scanned it. It took us two days to index it. Okay? But when I look at her goals here, it says to provide quality service to attorneys and paralegals for recording deeds and other estate documents, reasonable cost. Virtually error free indexing, provide pro processing of original documents from the time of recording to the time that the deeds return to the original person that put it in to the office. Um, to monitor growth and take full advantage in technology. Those are great, but how is that quantitative? How do we know we're doing better and we're getting we're striving and, and and we're doing better over the over time by having that generalization like that? Um, you know, so that you know as far as what's going on, uh, how about we look at how many number of days of cash here and scam? How many days it take to index? Also, what are the customers saying? What's our, what's our rating? If, if, if we had people fill out uh, comments and all that, or even, even something we come up with to check off on, how are we doing? Are we at 90% favorability? God help us, 70? How do, how do we get to the next point and we strive to do better every year if we don't have quantitative things that we're looking at for that office? How do we know we're doing, doing better or not? Um, so, I mean, that, that definitely is a thing because, you know, consequences of, of, of inaction, consequences of not looking at goals and looking at processes are very real. I see that in the treasurer's office. Guess what? If you uh, haven't got your deed filed in time and you're filing for your 4%, legal residence, you're not getting it if it's not processed and given to the assessor's office. You've got a problem. You're talking a couple thousand dollars in taxes additional until that gets done. And sometimes, if it takes long enough, you'll have to go ahead and pay that tax bill and, and wait on a refund. So, I, you know, I, I had more to say, but, you know, I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, I'm here. If you, if you need to ask me any questions, I do apologize again. I'm not, it's not really my makeup to talk bad about people or what's going on, but, you know, sometimes you have to kind of bring some things up. Uh, and, and I will say Debbie's done some great things, you know. I just, I just think in some ways she's lost her way or she's not keeping an ear uh, to what people are, are needing in that office right now. But I thank you very much. Well, Diane, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs>